In this video, I'm going to talk about variables in MATLAB. Variables are a super important topic in any computer programming course. I'm going to probably have two videos on this, so expect the next video to also be on variables. There'll be a little bit of redundancy, but if you're feeling like you got everything, then you can probably skip one or the other. Just letting you know. So I'm going to open up the document part 008 underscore variables. As with all of the videos in this series, all the code that I show you is available for free for download. There'll be a link in the description. It'll be a Google Docs folder. Let me know if you can't get access to any of those for some reason. You will not be able to edit them, only to download them, and then you can edit them on your own computer. All right, I'm going to double click on part 008 variables and change the width of the editor. All programming languages use variables. In computer science, a variable is a name that refers to a piece of data in memory on the computer. This is not exactly the same thing as a variable in math. In math, a variable might be known or it might be unknown, but it has a value. Usually you're trying to discover what the value is or you're using it as a placeholder because potentially in different calculations, you might fill in different values. In computer programming, a variable is simply some sort of container, a box with a label or a name on it. We can put information into the box. We can put different information into the box and we will probably, and that will simply replace or overwrite the previous information inside of the box, inside of the variable. Scrolling on down, I'm going to run this section, click anywhere in the section, then do Control Enter. All right, and it just prints out negative 2 and Dirk. Because I have not run any formatting yet, and I just opened MATLAB, I do not have Format Compact or Format Short G set up. I would like to do that, so I might even just add it into this section. Format Short G and Format Compact and then rerun it, control enter. Now, since there were no decimal places that needed displayed, the short G didn't really have any impact, but the compact made it single spaced instead of double spaced. All right, here I create three variables. I'm creating a variable named X and putting the value of seven or associating the value of seven with the name X. Here I'm associating the value of three with the name Steph, associating the value of negative two with the name Dirk. We can name our variables almost anything that we want. We don't really typically want to give them human names, but we could. Scrolling on down. Then I display Dirk. And then I also display Dirk, but inside of apostrophes. This is very, very different. When you display, use DISP and then parentheses, a variable name, you do not display the name, you display the information inside of the variable, inside of the box, in this case, negative two. If you want to display literal text, such as the name Dirk, you would put it inside of apostrophes. Now associate is a big word, and the technical term is assign. We are assigning the value of negative two to the variable Dirk. We're assigning three to Steph. Scrolling back down. But I will typically say put the value of 99 in Y, or set Y equal to 99. I really think put is a good name for this. Some programming languages, not very many modern ones, will even not use the equal sign. They'll use like an arrow to indicate the 99 is going into the variable y. But that's harder to type, so typically modern languages will just use an equal sign. Scrolling on down. Variables can be used with numbers and calculations. Here's the y value of a line with slope 3 halves and y intercept of 4. My text up here is actually a little mixed up. I think I modified this example at one point. So to make it reflect the correct text right here, I could change the values like so. So x equals 4. And then if I have a line with a slope of three halves and a y-intercept of five, I could figure out what is the y value above the x value of four, and I could run this code to get my result. I do that now, and I get 11. And if I'm interested in a different x value, well, I just change the x value and then run it again. And so above x equals seven, the y value is 15.5. This x right here, I am very much just substituting into this location the value associated with x. So we put 7 into a memory location named x, and on this line of code, we retrieve from the memory location named x the value in that memory, which is 7, and then we run our calculation, and we put the result of the calculation into the variable named y, and then here we display the value in that memory location named y. Continuing on down. Unlike in math class where a variable's value is whatever it is, variable values can and will change dramatically in computer science or computer programming. 
making my window a little bit wider here, my command window, and I'll run this section right here. And we see a variety of things printed out. In the code, I see x equals one, then two lines down, x equals whatever that calculation is, and then x equals this number in scientific notation, x equals this calculation involving x itself, and then x equals this text. And in between each of these lines of code is simply disp parentheses x. It's repeated exactly, no differences. And yet I get a different result displayed each time because I'm putting different information into this piece of memory that's associated with the name x. So when I put one in and then I display x, well, I get one back out. The results of this calculation are displayed on this line right here, and that result happens to be this number. This scientific notation translates to this same value right here, this decimal value. That's what's displayed out. And what about this line right here? Now, if you saw this in a math class, frequently you would be asked to solve for x, for example. Maybe you'd multiply both sides by x to get this out of the denominator. You'd formulate it as a quadratic. You're looking for the roots. That is not at all what we're doing here. What we're doing here is on the right side of the equal sign, we are making a calculation. We are taking the current value of x, which happens to be this number right here. We're going to divide it by 100, and then we're going to add 1 divided by that same current value of x. Once all of that is finished, we'll have a new number and we'll put that number into the memory associated with x, replacing the old value that we were just using. And the new result happens to be this number right here. So these x's on the right side of the equal sign are going to be substituted for the value that x currently has in memory. The calculation will be run, and then we are going to put the result into the variable on the left. The right side of the equation is executed before we do anything with the value before we put it into the variable. And then something kind of completely different. I take some text information and I put the text into the variable. It's no longer a number. Instead, I have this text right here put into the memory associated with this variable named x. A lot of languages don't let you do this, a lot of programming languages, but MATLAB does. In, other, in some other programming languages, such as Java or the C languages, you have to declare what type of variable you have. What sort of box is it? Is it a box for containing numbers or is it a box for containing text? And whichever you declare it to be, you can't put other types of information in the box. But with MATLAB, it's a little bit more flexible. It's like Python in that respect. We can put different information in our variables. Continuing on down. So here I've got a little calculation of the surface area of a cylinder. I've created a variable named R, set it equal to seven, H equals two. And then I'll do my surface area calculation, and I'll display out the result. Let me run this section, control enter. And that happens to be the surface area of a cylinder with radius seven and height two. Scrolling down slightly to get some of this on the screen as well. So down below, I've got basically the exact same calculation, but with slightly different variable names. Instead of R, it's radius. Instead of height, instead of H, it's height. But if I run it, I get the same result. It's highly recommended to use meaningful variable names. R could stand for a variety of different things. It's helpful in this case to have a comment, so text that we write after a percentage sign that will not be executed by MATLAB. It's helpful to have that comment specifying, well, what exactly is this R? And then we can save ourselves some typing by just using R. But I actually prefer this version down here where we have the word written out as radius. And it would still be nice to have a comment. It would be nice to know, is this in centimeters? You know, what is the unit exactly that we're dealing with here? So there are certainly trade-offs between how much typing you have to do and how expressive your variable name is, but I would recommend that you err on the side of expressiveness. Continuing on down. Now suppose we know the radius and surface area, but we need to solve for height. Now technically MATLAB can actually do this for us, but we're not going to learn about the symbolics until much later in the course, much later in the video series. So here I'm going to do the algebra necessary to solve our surface area equation for height. So here's the original. And then I subtract 2 pi radius squared from both sides. So now it's on the left side of the equal sign and it's negative right there. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi radius to get height by itself. And this is my result. It is very important 
that I specify the parentheses for what's in the numerator versus what's in the denominator. Now this would be perfectly fine in math class, but I actually need to have the height on the left side of the equal sign for MATLAB and most all other programming languages that I'm aware of. This equal sign is not mathematical equals. It is not a statement of fact about equality. It is an action. It is do this calculation on the right and put the information into the variable on the left. And we have to have a variable on the left to gather up that information and just the one variable. All right, let's run this code in this section. Control enter. I get two different answers. It depends if I put my parentheses correctly as I do the first time or incorrectly, uh, no parentheses at all, the second time. So this illustrates you need to help MATLAB out when the order of operations isn't going to naturally go the way you want it to go. We need to make sure that all of this in the numerator is calculated before performing the division and likewise in the denominator. So two is the correct answer. This is not correct. Scrolling on down. Organization is essential. The larger our programs get, the more important organization is going to be. I'm going to run this code and then talk you through it. Now, I didn't actually have a CLC here, so I kept the code from the previous section. That's probably not the organization I want. So I can just go in to line 93, hit enter, and type in a little extra CLC, and then run it again. Now, I have some text being displayed out by this line right here and by the line that follows, given a radius of 5 feet and a height of 10 feet, etc., etc. And that information is displayed out over here, though we need, may need to use the scroll bar to scroll over and see all of it. And then I've displayed out my results. So one aspect of the organization that I'm adding in here is just simply displaying some extra text to help the user understand what information is being displayed. I actually did use single letter variable names, which I don't necessarily recommend, but in this case, the extra text up here is helping me understand what the R and the H represent. Now, another pro tip here is to break large calculations into smaller pieces. So with a cylinder, there are circular parts of the cylinder on the top and on the bottom, and then there's a side area that can be represented by a rectangle. If you think of slicing the cylinder down the side and then sort of unfolding the tube part of it, you can flatten that out into a rectangle, so that's how the area is represented. We can combine the area of either the base or the top, multiplied by two, since there's two of them, a base and a top, and then add that to the side area to get our total surface area. This, in my opinion, is easier to read and easier to fix if there's a bug compared to, scrolling on up, what we did up here where we just tried to do the whole calculation all at once, or excuse me, uh, this surface area calculation or the one before it. Scrolling back down. So look for opportunities to divide your large problems into smaller pieces, potentially using more variable names, but you can test things independently. You could display out, let's get rid of this semicolon or this semicolon uh, to display out and then run it again to display out. Okay, well, here's the base area, here's the side area. You could do these calculations on paper or on a calculator and compare and see, okay, you know, if I'm not getting the number that I expect, then where did I go wrong? And you can isolate that mistake to either one or the other, hopefully, and make it easier to fix. Scrolling on down. Variables and functions. Variables can be used as inputs to functions, and very, very frequently they will be. Previously, we'd only seen inside the parentheses of a function a number, but a variable has a value, often it is a number, and a substitution takes place. When we take abs parentheses x, the computer knows to go look up what is the value of x and substitute that in. So when I run this, I first get a 1, because that's the absolute value of negative 1, and then I get the square root of 144, because that's what gets substituted in for the use of y inside the parentheses here. Continuing on down, variables can and will be used to capture the results returned from a function or from a calculation. So here I've got multiple functions as well as an expression. So some various arithmetic operations that I'm calculating. I want to put that information somewhere. I'm gonna use the equal sign to say put it into where? A variable that I've named result. And then I can display it out. Let's run this section. 
right? And the result is two. Then I can take the sine of three times pi divided by two, and I can put the result into a variable named y underscore value. Display that out, and I get negative one. Uh, and this right here is unsuppressed, so just by running it, it's also being displayed right here. What is the cosine of 120 degrees, d for degrees? And I get that into a variable named x, and it gets echoed out into the command window here. For naming variables, you can use any alphanumeric characters. So capital, alphabetical letters, lowercase, alphabetical letters, numbers as well, except you can't start with a number. So you can do a1 equals some number, but you can't do 1a equals some number. And if you try, you will get an error. But the a1 does work. Run it again, and there's that a1 right there. You can also use underscores. I don't believe there are any other symbols that should appear in your variable names. No apostrophes, no parentheses, no exclamation marks, no hashtags, none of that. Letters, capital or lowercase, numbers, underscores, and no numbers at the very beginning. It needs to start with a letter. Convention is to always start with a lowercase letter, although you will see that that is not always, uh, that convention is not always followed. We will continue to talk about variables, but that is all for this video.